we're beginning to see this happening in some countries. Jordan, for example, vaccinated the first refugee. Other places are coming up. Now, the way it's organized, it's very much depends on, um, of course, national plans. We are trying to make sure that refugees, IDPs, stateless people, migrants, marginalized populations are not overlooked. Uh, they can easily be overlooked, they're invisible, they are not in the statistics, for example, sometimes. And we're trying to make sure that this remains a very much in the planning process that they included in this vaccination. We are not saying that refugees uh, are forcibly displaced, that they are given a more priority than the others, than the nationals. But what he's saying that they should be included in the plans. They should not be overlooked. They cannot be invisible in this whole process. It's important that they're engaged because leaving them out, the pandemic is still there. Uh, so if we are not vaccinating uh, refugees, asylum seekers and the others, there's a segment of the population which will be at risk and they can put the others at risk. UNICEA does not buy vaccines, we do not give vaccines. It's the COVAX, it's a facility that is going to make sure that the vaccines are delivered to countries. But we are there uh, with our refugee operations, sometimes in remote uh, locations where logistics is quite complicated. We're trying to see where we help provide some support and logistics that we can bring these vaccines where they need, uh, need it the most. We want these vaccines to be out there as of yesterday. It's, that's the situation out there. The eagerness, the, the urgency around all these things, every day that is wasted on meetings or logistics or arrangements is a day lost. Now the issue is getting vaccines to those countries. So far, unfortunately, um, we have not seen the, the flow of vaccine to these countries and we are hoping, uh, working with WHO, working with COVAX, that as of February, the supply chain will pick up and gradually vaccines are going to start rolling into this country. It's already been uh, quite dramatic in a sense that in urban situations, with the lockdowns, they lost their incomes. They were. Uh, the ones who suffered the most because before the pandemic they were in urban areas looking after themselves. Uh, they could earn daily income, they could look after their families. But since the lockdown, they did not have reserves. So very quickly they lost all those um, assets that they had, the capacity that they had, and went very quickly deep down the spiral of poverty. Now for them to get back into the system, if they are not vaccinated, if they are not protected, it has major implications for them. This is their basic right. This is a, a legal right that they have, that they need to be vaccinated to then be able to then uh, go back to their jobs, to be able to send their children to school, so they'll be able to uh, live the life normally.